Okay, so 3 bit one brown James Grime, Numberphile, and a whole bunch of other YouTubers made videos on their mega fave numbers, so I figured I might as well make one as well. I may not be the most knowledgeable when it comes to maths compared to some of the others making these videos, but I think I have a good enough story to tell that warrants its own video. I also have a mission for any viewers who are brave enough to wander with me into the mathematical jungle, so uh, if you're interested, stay tuned for that. It'll be super cool and super spicy. So basically, the Mega Fave Numbers project is about mathematicians coming together to talk about their favorite numbers greater than a million. Well, I have a couple numbers over a million that I hold very dear to my heart, but the one I'm going to talk about today just barely crosses that threshold. It's 1,001,410, and the reason for that is kind of hard to explain. Before I explain why 1,001,410 is special, I have to explain the process in which I found it. I was sitting in my room one day, and I decided to try and find some cool math stuff to investigate. You know, the usual. I'm not entirely sure how I thought of it, but I came up with the idea of adding numbers together as if you were performing multiplication. Here, it'll make more sense if I draw it out. Basically, you take two numbers, let's say 23 and 456, and you draw them as if you were about to perform the lattice method, sometimes called the box method or the area model. Then you add each pair of digits up instead of multiplying them, and then you add all the numbers in the boxes. So in this case, 23 plus 456 happens to be 45. Obviously, 23 plus 456 isn't actually 45, so we need to give this operation a different name, something to separate it from regular adding. Well, you're adding numbers in this grid-like way, so why not call it square adding? I mean, that's just the name that I came up with it. You can call it whatever you want. I, I don't think there's a formal name for it. If there is a formal name, someone please tell me in the comments. I'd love to know. Anyways, the process of square adding isn't actually very interesting on its own. What is interesting is what happens when you repeatedly perform this operation on a number. Let's take 1 as an example. 1 is a great number to perform examples on. Take 1 and square add it to itself. Square adding one digit numbers is exactly the same as regular addition, so we know the answer here is 2. Now take 2 and repeat that process, square adding 2 to itself. We get 4, then we get 8, then 16. 16 gives us 28, which then gives us 40. 40, however, brings us back to 16. It's clear that we're now stuck in a loop of sorts, trapped to cycle through the same three numbers over and over again for all eternity, no matter how far we go. Alright, so 1 gets us stuck on this loop thing. What happens if we start from 2? Well, we saw what happened from 2. It goes to 4, and eventually gets trapped in the same loop. Okay, what about 3? That wasn't on our chain. Well, 3 goes to 6, which goes to 12, which goes to... 12. 12 loops back on itself. Hmm. And if you keep trying this game with other numbers, you'll find that you tend to end up in one of two scenarios. Either you get stuck on a number which square adds to itself, like 12, or you get caught in the 16, 28, 40 loop. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. Trust me, I spent a good while playing around with this, and those are the only two outcomes I stumbled upon. Something else I noticed was that there's only a few numbers which get caught on themselves. Those numbers are 0, 12, 24, 36, and 48, all sequential multiples of 12. When I first discovered these, I called them tranquil numbers because I thought it was kind of cute and sort of reflected their self-introspecting nature. If you try 60, the next multiple of 12, you get shot down to 24 and get stuck there. All other multiples of 12 get stuck on one of these five numbers. If you play around a bit more, you'll realize that it's not just the multiples of 12 that do this. It turns out that any multiple of 3, or any number with a multiple of 3 number of digits, such as 123, 666,667,655, etc., will eventually get stuck on one of those 5 numbers. Again, if you don't believe me, try it yourself. If you play around with this square adding thing long enough, you may start to wonder whether there's an easier way to do this operation. It is a pretty time-consuming task, after all, and I'm pretty sure we all have better things to do with our time than incorrectly add numbers for hours on end. Fortunately, there is actually a simple formula that bypasses all the boring calculations. If you square add a number to itself, it's the same as adding that number's digits together, multiplying by the number of digits the number has, then doubling. It's as easy as that. 
You can test it with some of our earlier calculations to verify that it works. Having a formula allows us to power through these calculations much more easily. And better yet, now that we have a formula, we can treat this weird process of square adding a number to itself as a simple function instead. f of x equals the digit sum of x multiplied by the number of digits of x multiplied by 2. I'll leave it to the viewer to verify that this formula actually works. After all, you shouldn't just trust some random funny hexagon man on the internet. Okay, so now you have all the prerequisite information. So where does 1,001,410 come into play? Well, basically, I got interested in finding the longest possible chain of numbers in this process that don't repeat, given a certain upper bound. So for instance, if we start from 1 again, the process takes 7 steps before it repeats. Starting from 3 only takes 3 steps before it repeats. Clearly, starting from 1 produces a longer chain of unique numbers, but can we do better? Well, if we use 100 as our upper bound, meaning we're not checking any numbers above 100, it turns out that starting from 89 produces the longest chain. 89 goes to 68, then goes to 56, then it goes to 44, 32, 20, 8, 16, 28, 40, then back to 16. That's a total of 10 steps before it repeats. That's pretty good, but can we do better? What if we extend our search to all numbers below a thousand, or a million, or something else crazy like that? How long can we make this chain? Well, we can actually make use of our formula from earlier to help figure this out. In order to find the next longest chain, I made the assumption that the next longest chain would just be our current chain with an extra number added on to the start. I'm not necessarily sure if this actually gives you the longest possible chain below a certain upper bound, but seeing as how bigger numbers seem to shrink super quickly, it seems a fair assumption to make. In order to find the number which comes before 89 in the chain, we need to find a number that, after applying our operation, gives us 89. Okay, so this means that the digit sum of some number, multiplied by the number of digits of some number, multiplied by 2, has to give us 89. We can divide 2 by both sides, and, um, hmm, that doesn't look right. There's no way for the left side of our equation to yield a fractional number, as digit sums and digit amounts are always whole numbers. This means that there is no number that can come before 89. So does that mean that there is no longer chain? Is 10 steps the best we can do? Well, there's actually a teeny tiny piece of info that I've left out, and you may have already spotted it. That 89 at the beginning of the chain isn't actually the only number which can go there. In fact, if we swap the digits and use 98 instead, we get the exact same chain with 10 steps. And if we plug 98 into our formula, we no longer have the problem that 89 had. So actually, if we're to extend our chain, then 98 is the quote unquote true number to use, not 89. I hope that makes sense, there's not really an easy way to explain that, but I, I hope that you understand. So anyway, now we have a formula we can actually work with. Let's mess around with this formula to see if we can get anywhere. If we assume that the next number has three digits, we can simplify the formula even further. With three digits, we run into the same problem we did with 89, having a fractional number on the right side of the equation, meaning there's no three digit numbers that can come before 98. Four digit numbers don't work either. Five doesn't work, six doesn't work, seven, however, does work. If we divide seven on both sides, we can see that we don't have any fractional bits to worry about. Okay, great. So the next entry in our chain has seven digits, and its digits also add up to seven. If you think about this for a little bit, you can probably come up with a few solutions yourself. For example, seven million, one million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred eleven, and one million two hundred thirty one thousand are all valid solutions. In this case, the smallest possible solution happens to be one million six. Awesome, so 1,006 is the next entry in our list, since it's the smallest. We can keep progressing in this way to build up our chain and... wait... There's something else we forgot to consider. With our 8998 entry, it was actually the bigger of the two numbers that happened to be the quote-unquote true solution. How do we know that 1,006 is the true solution in this case? The only reason we disregarded 89 was because it wasn't even, so it didn't work well with our formula. There's definitely more than one even solution for this step, so which one should we use? It turns out that in order to figure out which number is the quote unquote true solution, we need to look at the next step in the chain, the one before the number we're dealing with. We want to find the longest chain possible, given an upper bound, right? 
This means we need to find the solution, which gives us the smallest possible entry before it. This way, when we choose our next upper bound, we know we're not missing any longer chains. Here, an example will help clarify this. Let's say we choose 7 million as our solution. Plugging it into the formula, the smallest possible number of digits for this scenario is 625. I'll leave it as an exercise for the viewer to figure out why. However, if we use 1,000,006, the smallest possible number of digits for this scenario is 71,429. Even though 1,000,006 is the smaller number, 7 million provides the chain with the smaller first number. With 7 million, we'd only have to check up to numbers with 625 digits before we found a new number to add to the chain. If we chose 1,000,006, we'd have to check up to numbers with 71,429 digits before we found a new chain entry. Basically, we'd be wasting a lot of our time. It's easy to see that we should choose 7 million over 1,000,006 because of this fact. This is how we'll determine the true entries. Whichever solution gives us the smallest solution above it is the one we'll choose. So is 7 million the best we can do? Well, no, actually. If my calculations are correct, then 1,000,1410 is actually our next quote-unquote true solution for the chain. If you didn't see that coming, then you probably didn't read the title of this video. <laughs> 1,000,410 actually allows the number above it in the chain to have only 239 digits, which is a massive improvement from the 625 digits 7 million gave us. A close competitor to 1,000,1410 is 1,010,014, but using that number, the next number in the chain would have a slightly higher digit sum, 2,115, compared to 2,095. So 1,000,1410 reigns supreme. So, starting from 1,000,1410, we can create an 11 step chain, and some number with 239 digits and a digit sum of 2,095 comes before it. What is that next number, you may ask? Well, I don't know. This is where my story ends for this video. However, if you're at all interested in finding this 239 digit beast, I highly suggest helping out and trying to look for it. I know the upper and lower bounds for this number, and I'll put them on screen for you to see. Not that they'll be of much help, but it might be interesting to see. But other than that, I don't know anything else about this number. It's eluded me for quite a while now, and it would be super cool if we could find it somehow. I know the problem involves factoring numbers, but I'm not sure how we can narrow down our search any more than just brute forcing through all possible numbers to see which gives the smallest previous chain number. Also, and I think this is super important, I don't even know for sure whether my chain is the longest or not. It probably is, it seems to be the longest, but who's to say that one of those solutions we disregarded won't hold a better chain down the road? The immediate chains of our rejects definitely grow slower than the chain we're using, but maybe if you leave it to grow long enough, it'll become the better choice. I have no idea how to approach any of these questions, but that's what makes it so exciting. For me, this is prime unexplored territory. And if you're brave enough, I invite you to join me and take a deeper look. Or maybe this has all been discovered before and I just don't know about it. That's cool too. Anyway, this video is getting kind of rambly, so I'll stop it here. Feel free to ask questions or share discoveries in the comments. I'd love to read what y'all have to say. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs> God, why did I decide to end the video like that? <laughs> All right, it only took like five takes, but I got it. It's done. Hooray. Also, just as an honorable mention, the number 1,150 only needed 241 digits for the previous chain number, so it, it was a close second to 1,001,410. Sadly, it wasn't good enough. Okay, bye.